Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and for today's episode, we are going over the Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie and Shion EX Plus medals that just came out fairly recently. All right, so just like usual, I already have both Kyrie and Shion EX Plus medals uh, up on my website at khuxnation.com. Um, and if you go on the website, they should be on the front page for you to click on and take you straight to the meta analysis article to go along with this video. If you happen to be watching from a future point in time, you can always click on the meta analysis tab up here in the top right hand corner of the site and then click on the categories that correspond with the metal and then you'll be able to find the metal analysis article. Patreon members were able to get access to these articles a couple days in advance before they become publicly available. And now that this video is out, these articles will now be made publicly available for all of you guys to take a look at uh, down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started with the metal analysis. So we're gonna start off with Kari EX first and then we're gonna go on to Shion EX Plus. So Kingdom Hearts 2 Kairi EX Plus. She has a six star score of 135.048. And for this video, we're gonna be looking at mostly just the six star score. But she has a speed upright metal tier eight AOE cost zero gauges. She has a total max multiplier of 619 at six star. And her ability is the exact same thing for both seven and six star. And this is what she does. For one turn, she sets, not raises, she sets your general strength, PSM strength, and upright strength to seven plus seven tiers. She sets the target's general defense, PSM defense, and upright defense to minus seven tiers. She also sets the target's PSM strength to minus two tiers. She increases the special attack bonus plus 80% for all key all metals on your keyblade uh, raises the enemy's hit counter by one she fully heals your max hp she restores 10 gauges and cures your own status ailments which means poison sleep or paralysis she only expresses the exact same thing just the reverse version uh so everything that carry ex plus just did and said uh is the exact same thing for shion ex plus except for instead of raising like upright strength by seven it's reverse strength by seven and same thing with the and the same thing with defense instead of upright defense is reverse defense by seven instead other than that they're exactly the same thing now the main thing i want to quickly clarify real quick is the fact that kingdom hearts 2 Kyrie ex plus and shion ex plus have a new type of mechanic call the override i didn't exactly state override because i used the phrase sets instead of raises or lowers because in case you aren't aware raising and lower is different from setting a certain amount meaning that when you raise or lower a stat that means you're literally increasing or decreasing that stat by a certain amount however when you set a certain amount what that means is that regardless of what you or the opponent has carry shown ex plus are going to just simply replace whatever it is that you have with that stat boost so let's take for example you're doing pvp or something okay the opponent triple casted their zexian plus on you okay so you have minus seven uh, general strength debuff as well as your opponent also has a plus six uh, PSM and general defense buff normally in say like PvP for example you would have to like double cast a stained glass metal maybe an extra prime metal as well thrown in um, or two just to help get past all the defensive uh, buffs that your opponent has on top of um, trying to recover your general strength buffs as well uh, however in case of Kyrie and Shion EX plus uh, you don't have to do that at all because it simply replaces whatever it is you currently have with its own ability. So even if you're at minus seven general strength uh, debuff, as soon as you use Kyrie or Shoni X plus, you automatically have max buffs. You don't need to cast it again. No triple casting, no double casting, nothing, nada, whatever. Okay, you you literally just need to use the metal once, and you have max buffs, and your opponent has max debuffs. In terms of traits, pretty much the best traits that you want to have on Kyrie EX Plus and Shion EX Plus is going to be extra attack and any of these status ailment resistant traits. And these are for very specific reasons. Extra attack is primarily uh, solely because of the fact that she restores 10 extra gauges as well as she provides an extra enemy hit counter. Okay, um, it's mostly for the hit counter, but the restores 10 gauges is also pretty nice too, especially since very like a lot lately, we've been getting quite a bit medals that are have above average uh, SP cost. Like a lot of the medals recently have been around the four or five 
area in terms of SP costs, um, which can be pretty pricey without any sort of like cost reduction skills to go along with them to make the most use out of them. Even lately, before Kyrie or EX Plus came out into the game, a lot of people were starting to use uh, Illustrated Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie again as well, just to help make up for the cost restoration. Uh, so the fact that Kingdom Hearts 2, Kyrie EX Plus, and Shion EX Plus now provide the 10 gauges for us, we no longer need to use Illustrated Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie anymore. And even now, extra attack on an Illustrated Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie to give you 20 gauges restoration is still really nice. That like that almost guarantees that you never have to worry about uh, like SP cost management all whatsoever for the rest of the setup anymore. Um, so having extra attack on a Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie EX Plus or Shion X Plus is definitely going to help out quite a lot. And of course, for a lot of those really difficult quests, the enemy hit counter plus one is going to, that extra plus one will help out a lot too. Now in terms of the status elements, the main reason why I suggest status elements is because of the fact that out of the usual candidates of traits that we would usually want to have on metals such as like the minus 60 traits or like the raid boss traits and such the reason why i study status elements is because of the fact that kingdom hearts 2 kairi ex plus is not a damage metal neither is she on the ex plus they are not a damage metal they are primarily just a main buffer debuffer metal that you will put in the first slot of your keyblade to help set up for the rest of your keyblade setup all right because of the fact that as of right now the max buff cap uh, for both buffs and debuffs is set to seven tiers. Uh, you don't need to use anything beyond Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie EX Plus and Shion EX Plus in terms of buffs and debuffs. So you just use these two uh, metals alone in the first slot and then you can just go pure damage for the rest of the setup. So uh, in terms of PvP, because of the fact that these guys are not damage metals at all whatsoever they actually have some of the lowest multipliers in the game too so they're not really meant for damage at all whatsoever now i know the fact that they provide max buffs and debuffs do let them do a significant amount of damage as well but just keep in mind that if you're using Kyrie shoni x plus if you just follow that up with just one of those tier three or four uh damage metals uh they're gonna still do way more damage than Kyrie or Shigona EX Plus are going to do in the first place. So quite literally, they're not meant for damage at all whatsoever. So traits such as the minus 60 ground and defense uh, traits are not going to really have that much of an impact at all in the first place. So I don't recommend uh, trying to go for the minus 60 traits. Uh, of course, the raid boss trait uh, is kind of along the same line. She's not a damage metal at all whatsoever. So like having damage on her isn't really what you want either. So more or less, you're trying to go for more utility rather than uh, damage in terms of Kyrie and Shoni X+. And that's where the status ailment traits come in for PvP because status ailments still get seen quite a bit in PvP. Now I know they've been dying quite a bit uh, in terms of usage across the player base uh, for PvP. However, they still are really strong. I know with the release of this metal and Shioni X Plus as well, I know a lot of people assumed that turtling and status ailment strategies are just kind of dead. But that's kind of what everyone always says <laughs> whenever a main buffer debuffer metal comes out, such as like stained glass metals and such. They just that's what always gets said, and it just it's just not true at all whatsoever. Turtling and status ailment strategies are still very effective in pvp just like before you just need to know how to use them properly now that being said Kyrie ex plus and shiona ex plus can definitely counter any sort of uh turtling strategy however just like with turtling and status ailment strategies you need to actually understand when to actually use Kyrie shiona ex plus uh properly in the first place to actually be able to effectively counter those strategies uh at all a lot of times nine times out of ten they'll put Kyrie shiona ex plus within the first setup um, when they're attacking first, uh, but that doesn't get rid of the buffs if the opponent is going second, round one. It really just comes down to, do you as a player actually understand how to use turtling effectively, um, uh, so that way you can actually counter turtling properly. Now, in terms of status element resistant traits for, uh, these two metals as well, they, it, the metals do state that they cure their own status ailments, meaning that they cure poison, sleep, and paralysis. All right, and I know a lot of people were just kind of assuming, oh, status ailment uh, strategies are dead as well. This is not true. <laughs> this is not true. Uh, solely because of the fact that uh, just like with all the other Isuna like metals that cure your status ailments within the game, it doesn't make a difference if you have a metal that cures status ailments or not. 
Uh, if you're not able to use the metal in the first place because of sleep or paralysis making you skip that metal. And the same exact thing applies to Kairoshioni X+. If you can't use the metal in the first place to cure yourself with the status ailments, it doesn't matter if you even have the metal in the first place. So status ailment resistant strategies are still very effective in PvP. It's just a matter of, again, whether or not you actually know how to effectively use those strategies in the first place. Now in terms of skills, because of the fact that these are currently the meta defining main buffer debuffer metals in the game. They're currently the best ones in the game. They completely replace the original Kyrie and Shion EX metals as of right now. Uh, right now being the key word there because I'm completely expecting the buff and debuff cap uh, to be raised sometime within these next six months or so, four to six months or so, solely because of the fact that we're now at a point where we can easily cap out all of our buffs and debuffs, and the only way that they can actually obviously increase the power creep in some way, shape, or form is to, one, uh, release super high damage metals, or two, uh, just raise the cap. So that way they can still make more buffer debuffer metals as well as the fact that uh, we still need to actually uh, chase forward to making stronger setups and such. But because of the fact that as of right now, Kairi EX and Plus and Shioni X Plus obviously are the best main buffer debuffer metals in the game, uh, these are going to be metals you're obviously going to want to use on almost every single setup you ever use. <laughs> in the game what for whatever for every single mode period okay pvp coliseum universal setups uh sing uh niche setups raid boss setups like literally everything um and because of this i i highly recommend only having second chance being pretty much being the only type of skill that you would want on these metals simply because of the fact you're going to use them on every single setup within the game. And now because of the fact that these metals actually replace the previous Kairi Shion EX medals that we had in the past, uh, that that also means that those medals, uh, if you happen to have them and you got a Kairi Shion EX+, uh, that means the old Kairi Shion EX can now have other skills now besides a second chance skill on them now because your your chances are you're not going to really use them as much anymore um, because you're going to be using the Kairi EX plus instead so in terms of like pvp for example you can now put a uh, defense max skill on them if you really wanted to you can put status ailment uh, skills on them if you really wanted to uh, if you want to go crazy, you can put attack skills on them too. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could do something like that. You can literally now start using other skills on your old Kairi Shioni X uh, medals. This will actually help out in the future as well, because if the cap does get increased uh, sometime within like the next four to six months or so, that also means that you can now take advantage of those skills that you put on your, your old Kairi Shioni X uh, and use them as part of your setup. You will now, ha if you put a defense skill on your Kairi Shioni X. Now, since we're on the topic of the cap increase real quick, uh, I just want to quickly mention as well that once the cap increase actually happens, uh, the main thing I want you guys to realize is that because of the fact that Kairi and Shioni X Plus only set the amount, they don't raise or lower their stats. They just simply set those buffs and debuffs. Uh, that means that you can't actually get higher than what they provide even if you try to copy them, okay? So if your uh, Kairi Shion EX Plus has extra attack or use a copy metal to copy them to try and get extra, that's not gonna happen. Uh, what will actually end up happening is that the first time that you use the ability, uh, you and your opponent will have seven tiers of buffs and debuffs, all right? Um, and then if you try using the ability again, either through extra attack or a copy metal, what's going to end up happening is, is that it's going to replace those seven tiers of buffs and debuffs that are on you and your opponent with seven tiers of buffs and debuffs. So realistically, nothing actually changes because of the fact you're replacing one thing with the exact same thing over it. In a way, that's almost like me going up to my friend and saying, hey, I'll give you five bucks if you give me five bucks back. Okay, nothing changes. <laughs> Something happens during that interaction, but nothing actually changes overall. Uh, and that and that's what ends up happening with Kyrie Shion EX Plus if you try using them again. So in terms of when the cap actually gets increased, that is going to mean that you're going to have to use some of the older uh, buffer debuffer metals alongside them uh, again in order to help maximize the buffs, uh, the, the cap increase. So now the last thing I want to talk about before I actually go ahead and compare... Uh, Kairi Shioni X Plus uh, scores to the rest of the medals in the game and such with my spreadsheets 
Um, I just want to quickly talk about the fact that uh, whether or not this metal is actually a game changing or game breaking type metal. For those of you who are new to the terms, uh, I consider each of those phrasings two different things. Game breaking is along the lines of when something really good comes out and it's currently the best thing and obviously helps you increase the overall strength of your setups, okay? Game changing, however, is, is on a completely different scope where it almost quite literally means that if you don't have this metal, you're gonna have a very hard time competing at all in the first place uh, within the game, okay? The, this is pretty much the, the significant difference between what I consider a game-breaking metal and a game-changing metal. And where I would classify Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie EX Plus and Shione EX Plus, I would put them in the game-breaking category. I don't consider them game-changing at all whatsoever, specifically because of the fact that it is very easy as of right now, especially with the prime metals being in the game, uh, to replicate their effects uh, fairly easily, okay? Um, even just taking this example that I have right here on the screen, here's a fairly easy setup that we can do in the game, okay? If you're just using a, a six-star Kyrie EX, like an, a normal Kyrie EX with a copy metal, uh, where there's a counterpoint, uh, with HD Venus copying a seven star prime metal, right here you already have max buffs and debuffs within the game uh, done within the first three slots. And this is completely fine simply because of the fact the first two to three slots are meant to be used just for your main buffer debuffer metals in the first place. And realistically, because of how the game works in terms of buffs and debuffs, uh, buffs and debuffs actually get applied to the opponent before you actually do damage. So, just by looking at the setup right here, you might think that, okay, you're not going to actually do any significant damage until slot 4. That's actually not true, simply because of the fact you actually apply the buffs or debuffs before you do damage, meaning that you're actually doing significant amount of damage um, within slot 3 already. Um, and this is actually fairly normal because the first two slots are not really meant for damage in the first place. Um, so actually, nothing really ends up changing too much, and the only thing that having a uh, Kyrie or Shion EX Plus does to a setup like this is that now that means that you can just start applying damage for, um, by slot 2 instead now instead of at slot 3. Um, which, that does help out a, like a lot in the top tier uh like setups and such but if you're nowhere even remotely close to like say like top 100 consistently um within the game th throughout the modes and stuff this doesn't even matter to you it doesn't even apply to you whatsoever um simply because of the fact that you can easily replicate the type of effects that they bring out and that's just a great example of what i'm trying to say that like uh Kyrie shoni x plus are just game breaking metals they're not game changing metals um Kyrie and shown ex when they first came out the original ones uh those were quite literally game changing metals uh solely because of the fact that for any of you who are not aware the previous main meta uh main buffer debuffer metal within the game was previously before that the uh 0.2 Kyrie metal that we had in the game and when you look at the effects between 0.2 Kyrie and Kyrie and Shion EX, um, they're just so significantly different. It's it's just it's disgusting. Okay, um, that like it 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 obviously made a huge impact on the game on how significant of a difference in abilities those two types of metals were. Whereas if you compare Kyrie EX to Kyrie EX Plus. It's actually not too much of a difference, to be honest. All right, so now let's go ahead and compare Kyrie and Shioni X Plus uh, to the rest of the medals in the game, uh, looking at my spreadsheet. So in terms of score, we're gonna look at a score first. Uh, this one's honestly to be expected, but they are currently the best, uh, aside from the copy medals in the game, uh, We like all above here are all the copy medals in the game, uh, ignoring the copy medals, Kyrie and Shoni EX Plus are currently the best medals in the game in terms of score, and this obviously makes sense. They, they literally max out every single buff and debuff in the game, and they're also the first medals in the game to provide PSM strength debuffs as well. I would like to also point out that they're also the first medals in the game to actually beat Scrooge McDuck in terms of score, uh, and this just kind of makes sense simply because of the fact they're also uh, the first medals in the game. They provide a little bit extra more utility than Scrooge McDuck does, on top of that they're also AoE this time as well, and whereas Scrooge McDuck is a single target medal. Uh, so it makes obvious sense why they have such a higher score than Scrooge McDuck, although Scrooge McDuck is still one of the best medals in the game. 
I'm still jealous when people I, when I see people with Scrooge McDuck, to be honest. But yeah, they're currently the best medals in terms of score within the game, and that just makes sense. Um, like I said before, though, in terms of actual multipliers, they have some of the crappiest multipliers in the game. Quite literally, the only reason they even have a 6.19 multiplier in the first place is is quite literally because they're a tier 8 medal, and which gives them that, like... 230% guilt increase whereas their their base their base and max multipliers are literally uh like tier one tier two multipliers uh so they they're they're literally not that great at all other than that that's it for today guys if you enjoyed the episode please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button as the best way to know when i upload more videos such as this one i am trying to look into trying to have a regular upload schedule uh again now finally uh now that i'm, I'm done with school but other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.